This one right here is the absolute cheapest AM5 motherboard you can buy ever in the world and you can currently buy it on aliexpress for just around 90 bucks you can get it actually for even cheaper if you use coupons and the usual stuff we should do on aliexpress now i have been reviewing quite a few of these aliexpress motherboards and we actually found one which i believe to be an absolute steal and that is or better should i say was the chingue b650m snow dream problem with that motherboard is it's still very good but it went up in price when i reviewed it i was saying it was an absolute best buy and it was going to destroy the competition i was very surprised by the price it was selling at and the quality of the features it was packing well it turns out a lot of people bought it and it went up in price same for the absolute first motherboard i reviewed at this point more than one year ago the b650i Chingyue Night Devil. That one really went up, unfortunately. So I am still recommending those, but I'm curious to see if there is a competitor out there which can match the performance for a lower price because maybe now they are less known than the Chingyue option. Now the Chingyue, again, it's still very good, but today we're taking a look at the Huanansi B650M B Pro. If you've been following the channel for a while, which you probably haven't because my channel is tiny, you should know that back in the day I was doing a lot of Juan and C motherboard and I'm talking back like six years ago. Back in the day, Juan and C was the only brand to make X79 and X99 motherboards for decent price, which were actually decent and I was paying a lot of money for them, over 100 bucks for an X99 motherboard, but it still made sense because you could put a Xeon in there and get a very good editing machine. And in a world where high core count CPUs were very expensive, that was a very good deal. However, nowadays they made a brand new AM5 socket motherboard, even though with an older chipset, so BC50 instead of B850, but I have a full video on the channel explaining why for most people BC50 is actually plenty fine, you don't need B850, so that's not a concern of ours. What we care about is should you buy this for your new budget build and i'm actually doing a full budget build with this which is going to be on the channel soon and it's going to be crazy because it's going to be 500 bucks budget build with a ryzen 7 and an rtx 5060 so stay tuned for that too but let's start from the beginning so packaging is very minimal you basically get nothing with the motherboard not even the battery because to go through customs they have to remove the battery now back in the day they used to hide the battery somewhere, but I suppose has one and C has gotten bigger because it's actually a big factory making a lot of products now. They probably stopped doing those shady things. So now you don't get a battery. You gotta put your own battery. And here is where the problem starts because this motherboard, the battery doesn't really likes to stay in. It just jumps out. Probably it's just my unit that's slightly defective, but it's not off to the best start. With that said, the motherboard itself actually looks pretty good. Now, sure, it's not going to have the same marketing appeal as the Chingyu has no dream being full white. This one is a more normal motherboard, but it doesn't have any odd color schemes and it has a pretty nice black look to it. Now, it doesn't have any NVMe heatsinks, which off the get-go is something I'm noticing and I'm not too happy about. However, it does have a pretty questionable but big heatsink for the VRMs. That I thought was gonna be absolutely trash because look at how thin it is. I actually thought I was getting scammed when I saw how thin it was on the side. Well, it turns out, this is a little spoiler of the performance, after testing it, that heatsink actually works wonders and it does the job. It gets really hot. Back onto the actual layout of the motherboard. It's pretty standard, two dim slots, which we like because it allows us to get a bit, little bit extra RAM performance, as I discussed in previous videos. We do get two NVMe slots and they are both Gen 4 and I verify that Gen 4 goes at full speed. Now the PCIe is Gen 4, it is not Gen 5, but that's due to the chipset because it's B650, but we don't need Gen 5 either way for our GPU. I don't think you're putting a 5090 on this motherboard. However, if you want me, put 5090 on this motherboard, I can do it. Maybe put a 9800X 3D on this motherboard, a 5090, and see if we can do it. I can do it for you guys, but it's very much unrealistic, but we can do it. Connectivity is pretty standard. You also get one of the older PCIe X4 slots. Now I don't have to guide you through all the connectivity on the motherboard. It has plenty of USBs, a decent LAN, no Wi-Fi, and all the internal connectivity you may need, except for USB-C. So if you need that, you're out of luck. It also has RGB connectors, two, which is good. Dual three pin. All in all, physical layout of the motherboard is great. I went ahead and installed a Ryzen 7 7700 with some Juhor RAM on it. You probably never heard about it, it's fine. And the new CryoRig C5 cooler. 
This is actually a query I have in for review, but we'll talk about it in a different video, not today. The RAM also looks very good. I'm debating whether I should make a full video about this RAM. I have to test it out with battery and overclocking, and that takes a lot, a lot of time. But speaking about overclocking, the BIOS of this motherboard is great. It seems to me like they all share the same BIOSes, these motherboards. They probably literally do. Like there is some guy, programmer, that's making BIOSes for all of these. So the BIOS is basically the same as the Chingue. So I will repeat what I said back in that video, and that is I am very surprised by the amount of options and how well the BIOS is made. It is actually better than some name brands BIOSes, which honestly on the low end, they have been pretty lackluster. So you get anything you may want and a lot of things which you don't need, you all get in this BIOS. You get PBO, you can overclock your stuff, you can save profiles in the BIOS since it's in the advanced options. You can overclock your RAM, you can change the timings, you can change all the little voltages which you need for RAM tuning. It is a great, great BIOS. With that said, how does the motherboard actually perform? Because good physical layout, good BIOS, it means this motherboard, it is exactly on par with name brand stuff. I went ahead, did a full install and booted right into Windows. Now the first test, which these motherboards usually fail, is a 100% load on Prime 25, small 50, and then look at the VRMs, how hot they get. That's where Juan and C especially, back in the day with Xeons, had issues. Back in the day, it was overheating, which would basically make your motherboard last just two years and then it would break. I got a thermal imaging camera, very cheap one, not the best one. I should probably buy a better one, but the budget is tight on this channel. I checked it, you know, it's difficult to check because the cooler was covering half of the VRMs, but I managed to check. And we also gave it a look to the sensors, which they're not always accurate, but they give you a decent indication. So it turns out, CPU is running at full boost, so performance is definitely solid for 90 watts. And it turns out, as I anticipated, the heatsink is doing a very good job. So the VRMs are not overheating at all, and they actually run better than some of these Biostar MSI motherboards, which come with no heatsinks on the very low end, like some uh, very cheap B650 they make. This is better. It is far from a high-end B650, so I have not tested it with a 16-core Ryzen this time. I haven't had the time, but I am positive the VRMs are not going to handle it at stock. They're going to have 200 volt. However, a Ryzen 7 7700, you can handle fine at stock. And even a 9700X I've tried, it handles it fine. However, I would still recommend you guys undervolt it because, listen, it's free. It takes you 10 minutes. You can follow my guides. And you're going to reduce the power drop. So reduce the strain on the motherboard either way. The XMP on the RAM also worked in one go. So 6,000 megahertz was working. However, it wasn't fully stable, but that's mostly due to the CPU itself. So a Ryzen 7 7700 has a weak memory controller. You want a 9000 series CPU for better memory controller compatibility. Unfortunately, made a full video about that. It's a whole other issue. With that, we covered the motherboard. You get 100% of the gaming performance. It is very well tweaked out of the box. It actually prefers to make the CPU run as long as it has VRM uh, headroom instead of some motherboards which are going to cut your CPU. I don't know why. It is on par with the Qingyue motherboard in terms of features and performance. Where it is not on par, in my opinion, is build quality and looks. Build quality, I'm just saying because it doesn't have a heatsink on the NVMe slots. And again, the battery issue where the battery doesn't want to stay in. Also, you are missing a USB-C connector. But if these three things are not a problem, and if you like the looks, I would say it is the best buy right now for budget builds. And even if you are a PC flipper, it's going to be a great asset to you because we always need to buy motherboards. We can't always buy them used. And this is just an easy way to get a motherboard for your next PC flip. So with that said, it is fully, fully recommended. You can go ahead and buy it if you can deal with the few hiccups which you're getting, which are non-performance related. So yes, it is another positive one. And with that said, you guys told me about a few unnamed motherboards, which even I didn't know about, which I have ordered They're coming soon and checking them out soon. But if you guys tried one of these, please let me know down in the comments if you had a good or bad experience. And if you want me to review other motherboards, drop their names. I'm going to buy them all and try them all. And with that said, maybe drop a like and subscribe to help me out, help me get a better thermal imaging camera and see you in the next one. Bye bye.